I, I straight up think it's too hard. I, I, I think it's too, like, flat out, I think it's way too hard of a game. Hold that thought and don't write off the game just yet. I'm speaking as someone that was plenty horrible at it for more hours than I care to admit. But if you stick with it and maybe watch a few guides, you will improve fast. No game has truly nailed the melee combat battle royale experience. At least that's what I thought before realizing that the best in class melee BR just had its first birthday, introducing a brand new map with the new competitive season. The gaming market has been saturated with battle royale games for quite some time now, and only a select few of them truly make an impact. Obviously, the main archetype that's been explored is shooter, glide or parachute in, collect your guns and ammo, and go from there. Shooters are relatively easy to translate into BRs since you don't really need to reinvent the combat system, point and click still works for the most part. In the case of a fighting game, it's not like you can just copy and paste formulas from something like For Honor or Elden Ring and build out some loot tables for the BR elements. Due to the close range combat and sort of tunnel vision nature of a fighting game, vulturing and third parties can be a pretty big issue, which means that a substantial and capable movement system is necessary to be able to escape situations like that. Naraka Blade Point is the game that combines the best fighting mechanics and the best movement for the overall best melee battle royale experience, as of right now at least. The game is hugely popular in China, which is where the game is developed, but it's still yet to see the same pro scene or popularity in the West, as far as I know. I'll be upfront with my least favorite thing about the game, and it's honestly a pretty sizable downside, and that's that it's not free. The model for games like this to be successful these days is to have all of the gameplay elements be available for free, and let people spend their money on cosmetics. And I absolutely think that business model could work for this game, considering how incredible the cosmetic items actually are. Numerous detailed and unique outfits for every character, accessories galore, and a whole batch of emotes and player card customization, many of which are unlockable through the infamous battle pass and purchasable with paid currencies. People will buy these things, arguably too many of these things, but they won't buy a single one if they never try out the game in the first place. At a third of the price of a AAA game, it's not a huge paywall, but for a lot of people that's still $20 too many for them to be willing to try out a somewhat experimental type of video game. Of course, that's what reviews and such are for, to give some insight as to whether or not a game is worth the money, and in my opinion with Naraka, it absolutely is. It has all the bells and whistles to keep you engaged for a very long time, and I'll go over the ones that stand out the most. One thing before I move on, the game is on Xbox and PC Game Pass, so if you already have that, it's back down to that magic price, free. Naraka actually has a pretty substantial amount of PvE content with the recent release of the campaign mode, boasting character progression, dungeon style challenges and boss fights, and it's even playable in up to 3 person co-op. I'm not really so much of a PvE'er, so I've tended to stick more to the PvP side of things, but from what I've heard it's actually a lot of fun. Having that fun and rewarding non-PvP content is a big deal to me, since that draws in potential players that may not be a fan of Battle Royale, or of course PvP as a whole. I keep saying that phrase Battle Royale, but that's just one of the game modes. There's free for all deathmatch called Bloodbath, mode that I've never played before since I'm addicted to the BR, and even mode that I've never played before since I'm addicted to the BR. There's even custom lobbies for you to duel your friends, or set up small fight clubs or tournaments. Naraka has a lineup of 13 unique characters to choose from, all with a tactical ability and an ultimate, something that will probably remind you of Apex Legends, and honestly, a lot of other things I'll go over probably will too. Some heroes are good in solo, some have more support roles that are best used in duo or trio, and plenty of them are good in all modes. I really like this compared to games like Fortnite, since it gives you some character identity, each one even having their own backstory and voice lines. Picking a main and mastering a character is a lot of fun, and that goes for the weapons too. Despite the loot out of each chest being random, in my experience, you really can't go a very long time without finding your favorite weapon. Even if it's a lower rarity, using the weapon you're comfortable with is probably going to be worth it. Each of the weapons has its own unique moveset and properties, and they're really well balanced for the most part. Some are definitely stronger than others, but that's part of what makes Battle Royale gratifying. Opening that golden trove and getting that god tier weapon or item that makes you think, yes. Ranged weapons are also in the game, but they're very much secondary to your melee weapon and used a lot more situationally. The melee combat itself feels very visceral and weighty, it just has that really satisfying nature to it when you land your combos and that kill feed pops up. There's a massive amount of combos and tactics that can be used across all weapons, and in combination with the character abilities, it makes for quite the high skill ceiling. 
and that's not even with the movement tech factored in. If you're curious about some of the combat basics, there are plenty of great videos out there that cover it, but essentially you have two types of attacks, light attacks and focus attacks. Within the light attack umbrella, you have vertical attacks and horizontal attacks, which can be used to execute additional moves like uppercuts and jump attacks. Focus attacks are performed as the final hit in a chain of light attacks or by charging a light attack. Focus attacks are uninterruptible by light attacks, but can be parried, while light attacks are interruptible, but cannot be parried. It creates an interesting combat dynamic that can be a little hard to get used to, but once you have the fundamentals down, it turns out to be a lot of fun. Just don't be too hard on yourself. It won't be long before you're a lot better. Movement. I've brought it up a few times now without really getting into it, but it's just as important as I've made it out to be. Escaping bad situations or using the environment to your advantage to take out an opponent is enabled by a few key mechanics. Number one being sticky walls. There is literally nothing in this game that can't be climbed. You can crawl, jump, and even attack your way up walls and cliffs. I guess the word for it would be parkour, and there's plenty of it in Naraka. The new map has a bunch of environmental hazards like floor spikes and pendulums of death, as well as helpful elements like air boosts that shut on and off. A huge key to the movement system that I've ignored so far is the grapple hook. Everyone starts with a grapple, you just need to collect charges for it around the map to be able to use it. Grapple hooks are one of the most common items to find around the map, so as long as you dedicate enough inventory slots to it, you should basically never run out. Grapples have a pretty long range and give you quite the amount of travel distance, but they're balanced by having long startup frames where someone can catch you with their own grapple or just simply attack you out of it. If you want to grapple away from someone, you're first going to have to get some distance by using your character abilities or the basic movement techniques before it's safe. To go over some of the more random things that Naraka just does right on the gameplay side of things, I love the shop system. Dark Tide coins can be used at one of the numerous shops around the map to buy compulsory items like additional inventory slots, soul jades that can upgrade your weapon and stats, and to restock you on heals, shields, and grapples. The shops take a lot of the RNG out of the game, and essentially guarantee that you'll be going into late game with a decent loadout and plenty of healing items. Care packages called Morris's Blessings spawn twice with every instance that the storm moves in, and are guaranteed to contain epic rarity armor, which means that you shouldn't ever be going into those final few fights without a substantial amount of shield to work with. It's the early game that's a lot more volatile, and there is that chance of spawning right next to someone that loots legendary armor and weapons right away and crushes you with your pathetic musket and total lack of shield. Luckily, for a limited amount of time during the beginning of a game, you have access to one free respawn. When you die, you turn into a ghost of sorts, leaving all your loot behind and giving you the option to run to one of the many respawn points around the map. You don't have to spawn at the nearest one and risk being spawn killed by the person who just killed you, but even if you did choose to spawn nearby, you automatically come back with a common shield, a random melee and ranged weapon, and even a few seconds of immunity. This mechanic takes away a lot of the early game bad luck frustration and gives you that second chance to get properly geared up for the next fight. The last thing related to the core gameplay I'll mention is the storm, and the main thing that I really appreciate with it is that you can always outrun it. It serves the purpose of shrinking the map size, not punishing you for forgetting to start running a minute in advance. Outside the game itself, there's always limited time events going, ways to interact with your friends like sending them event currency, and a variety of daily, weekly, and season-long challenges to earn you rewards. The events give you access to loot boxes for a chance at awesome cosmetics, and there are other ways to earn them too, such as free and paid versions of the battle pass. So even if you never want to spend a dime on cosmetic items, you still have a chance to get them through loot boxes, within the free battle pass, and through the shop. The shop I mean is the Spectral Silk Shop, which is one of my favorite things in the game, since it allows players to save up their silk for weapon and hero skins, along with plenty of other items. Silk takes a lot longer to collect without the paid battle pass, but if you're participating in events, you really do get plenty of it. This video is not sponsored, I just truly enjoy the game and feel like it deserves some more attention. Well balanced and innovative battle royale and several other modes, fleshed out PvE content, and plenty of questing and high quality cosmetics to reward you. I personally have always been much better at fighting games than shooters, so for me it's been kind of refreshing to be actually pretty decent at a BR. If you guys have really enjoyed games like Elden Ring and For Honor, as well as Apex, I can almost guarantee you you'll have a great time with Naraka. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, and I'll see you next time.